What's on the menu today? Smashy Boys. Oh shit, really? Smashy Boys? Smashy Boys. Woo! We got a show! What's up, bro, boys and girls? Today on the Maladjusted Cook. I'm the Maladjusted Cook, right? Yeah. Today on the Maladjusted Cook, Smashy Boys. What's a Smashy Boy? This was a special request from one of my dads. That's right, I got two dads. How many dads you got? I got two. This is a special request from one of them. I am gonna be talking about smash burgers, the beefy kind, all right? We're gonna get into some detail about it. Uh, but first, let's talk about the ingredient list, what you're gonna need today. Number one, you're gonna need an onion. Pickles, Duke's mayonnaise, all right? Then we got some plain old yellow mustard. We're gonna get some good sweet potato rolls, my preference. I don't care what you use for bread, but the Martin's potato rolls add a nice little sweetness to it. You're gonna need some American cheese, non-debatable. A fork, a knife, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut up that onion, and a little bit of parchment paper. All right, we're gonna talk about what to do with this in a little bit as well. Also, last ingredient on the list, a broom. I'll get to that when we get to that. You'll understand why. Those that know, probably already know. All right, guys, let's get into Smash Burger Day in the iron skillet. Let's not forget about our trusty iron skillet behind us. This is gonna be a good one, stick around. So let's talk a little bit about beef, like what kind of beef you're going to use. This is a classic beef hamburger, but it is a smashed burger. Literally, we're going to take this little meat wad and we're going to smash it between this parchment paper. We'll get some shots of that in a bit. But this isn't your traditional grill burger. It's not a steak burger. It's not your steakhouse like fancy with, uh, you know, grilled onions and mushrooms and Swiss cheese. Guys, there is a place and time for those burgers. This Smash Boy is not one of those things where you want to overdo it with bacon and a bunch of cheddar cheese, nothing crazy, all right? We're going to keep it real, real simple. But let's talk about the beef, okay? For something like this, you want a good 80-20 mix. 80-20, meaning 20% fat, 80% beef. Um, it's very important because unlike, say, a grill burger where you might want a leaner beef so you don't get all that drippage and grill fire and all that, um, you want that fattier beef for this burger because it's gonna fry up in the skillet. Essentially, I'm gonna be frying it in its own fat and a tad bit of oil. Um, and we'll talk about the oil as well and why that's important. If I had a lean ground beef ball that I was gonna smash, you wouldn't get the same sort of crust that we're really trying to build. The smash burger is fun because it gets those crusty fucking edges that everybody really likes. Uh, and, and that's what's hallmark about the smash burger versus a grill burger versus uh, your typical bar burger. We really want to enjoy that crunchy stuff that's going to hang over the bun. And that's part of the experience, guys, that we're really going to get funky with today. So I want to stress, get yourself an 80-20 beef. If you can get a little bit fatter, that's fine. Like a 75-25 would be good. This right here is just local ground chuck. I didn't really get anything fancy. I didn't grind my own. I just went to the store, got local ground chuck. Uh, the size of this ball is about a quarter pound. If you guys don't have a scale, don't worry about that. Most of the times they're gonna package beef in a one pound pack. Very simple guys, a quarter pound is a quarter pound. Take that one pound pack, dig your hands in, take out about a quarter of it, you got a quarter pound of beef. We're gonna fuck with that today. Let's go. Let's talk about dicing an onion, all right? There's a very particular way to dice an onion. Everybody's got their own style, I'm sure. I'm gonna show you my way if you've never diced an onion before. It's pretty simple, it'll work for you, all right? We don't have to be chefs to dice an onion. Chef Max, I'm talking about you. I've seen your fancy onion cutting. I'm not doing that today. All right, let's check this onion out. First of all, guys, take a look at the onion itself. This is a plain old white onion. I want a white onion, I don't want a sweet onion, I don't want anything crazy. So, it's got this little root end right here, and then it's got a little tip end over here. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna cut this right down the middle, leaving that root and the tip largely intact. So, I'm gonna split it halfway. Notice, the root is just split in half, the ends are still intact, so I'm gonna start there. I'm not gonna need much onion for one burger, so I'm gonna put one half aside. Now, leave the root end on, and I'm gonna tell you that leaving that on is really gonna help dice this onion rather effortlessly. The other side, the tip end, I'm just gonna take that off. 
All right, from there, I can peel back that papery skin. If you get one of the layers of the onion under there, that's totally fine. You're not losing much. And you see when we take that off, the root end is still intact, all right? This is a good thing. So from here, guys, if your onion is super, super tall, you may wanna do a couple horizontal etches in there. What I'm gonna do is just one. This onion isn't super big, which is what I prefer a medium onion to be, okay? Just cut it along the horizontal plane. Now from here, I'm gonna move in and cut some rather small vertical planes. And guys, don't make fun of my knife skills, all right? Some of y'all don't even know what the fuck to do with a knife. Don't come at me with this shit in the comments. Here we go. Now, I've made some vertical cuts, one horizontal cut. From here, I'm just gonna dice downward into a small dice, and you'll see what's coming out. Some finely diced onions. Relatively the same size, which is what we want. We don't want big chunks and little chunks. So I'm gonna put this aside, just so you guys can visualize what I'm working with. This is what we're looking for, okay? Nice small chunks, relatively even size. Again, this is a burger, this isn't some French cuisine, so we don't need the exact size in every single dice. I'm gonna take this little bowl I've got here, pick these onions up, try to get most of them in the bowl and off of my cutting board. And guys, if your eyes are watering up, it means your knife is bullshit, get a sharper knife. As like right now, my shit is pretty burnt, all right? It tells me I need to sharpen my knife. There's also other little wise tale tricks you can do, like putting bowls of water out around the onion. I find that none of that shit works. I used to chop onions in a kitchen for years, and uh, I've tried every trick in the book. The best I can recommend is that you get a sharp knife. That will really mitigate a lot of the gases coming out of the onion that mess up your sinuses and your eyeballs. All right, now we've got our onions diced. I'm gonna leave these off to the side. We're gonna start concentrating on what to do with this meat wad right here, quarter pounder, going into the iron skillet. We got butter. I forgot to mention, you're gonna need butter. You're always gonna need some sort of fat. I don't care if you use oil butter for the bun though, that's where the shit's at. So I've got my bun, I've got some butter. I'm gonna put it in the skillet. We're gonna toast this off. Top and bottom, you slack sons of bitches. We're not going in on one side, we're going in on two sides. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Come on over here. I'm gonna fire the skillet about medium high. All right, I don't want these buns to dry out, so I'm gonna fire it medium high. Edit some of that shit, all right. So I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of butter Plop that in the pan, okay, as we do, move it around, get the pan nice and oiled with the fat. So if I do this bun low and slow, guys, what I'm gonna end up with is a crispy turd, and I don't want that. I still want the integrity of this soft potato bun to maintain. So medium high on the skillet, that's gonna give me a crust on the bun without drying it out. So we got a little bit of butter left in the pan, that's okay. Make sure that your surface area on that bun is fully soaked in butter. And we're gonna check it in a couple minutes. Um, I'm gonna probably leave it there for 30, 45 seconds. We'll check on it, see how it's doing. And then we're gonna flip it over and toast the tops and bottoms as well, inside and out, no slack shit. Who invented the first smash burger? Uh, me. I did. You're the one. Mm hmm? You're J. Edgar Spanish. Yeah, the same. Just as we talked about in the grilled cheese episode that was prior to this one, we gotta move this thing around a little bit. Hot and cold spots, always remember that. Your iron skillet, depending upon your setup, your stove top, it's gonna have hot and cold spots. So I wanna move this around. I don't have to keep it moving but I don't want to leave it in the same place the whole time. So I'm just going to move it around a tad bit. This has been in there maybe less than a minute. I'll just show you guys what we're working with so far. It's probably not much. So you can see we're getting a little bit of a light toast. Probably use a little bit more time. I do like a crusty edge. Goes well with the crusty meat crust. All right, we're going to plop that back down. Check on it again here. I don't know, another 30 seconds. Five seconds. Few moments later. 
Guys, when you start seeing smoke around there, we're probably doing pretty well. Ah, yeah, all right, so this is what we want. I don't mind a little bit of crust because that's gonna go well, like I said, with the meat crust we're gonna develop. So from here, before I take it out, I'm just gonna very quickly move around in some butter. I'm gonna toast the tops and bottoms. When you have a sweet bun like this, like a potato bun, like a Hawaiian bun, that crispy top and bottom is gonna bring so much to the burger, you're never gonna go back to just toasting one side. You gotta to toast both sides, mandatory. All right, so now that the skillet's relatively hot, we don't really have to wait too long for this to happen. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of a top and bottom crust already. I'm gonna let that sit maybe another 10 seconds. We're gonna pull it, let it cool off, and then we'll get to smashing up some meat, and we're gonna throw it in the iron skillet. We're gonna set off some fire alarms, promise. Sponsor me, PBR. Let's do like now, that's some fresh beer. Ugh. 12 seconds later. Let's pull this bun. Oh yeah, top, bottom, crispy, 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 toasted. All right, get out of my way, cameraman. Here we go. I'm gonna let it sit there. And I like to fold it over like that because it steams out a little bit. All oh, it's real hot, so you got a lot of stuff happening in here. I'm maintaining that integrity of the softness inside while getting the crispy outside. This is next level shit, y'all. Keep with me, let's go. As you can see, the iron skillet behind me is already ripping hot just from toasting the bun. It's smoking back there, that's good. I want to let this thing stay on high while we prepare this hamburger. All right, this parchment sheet, guys, if you're wondering what this is about, just take a little piece of parchment like this. Very basic, you can find it near your saran wrap, near your tin foil. Um, it's basically a paper that you can use to uh, get things crispy on the bottom. Like you're throwing some chicken fingers in the oven, Put the parchment paper down instead of foil. This will bake it from the underside. I don't know how it works. Science. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this parchment paper into two little squares, okay? Now, the fun thing about parchment paper is it does not stick like, say, a saran wrap or a foil would. It's my preference for getting something in easy and getting it out easy. So here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, let me talk about this real quick. What do I wanna do with this 80-20 beef? All right, I want to work it just a little bit. I can't pull it straight out of the tray and make a meatball and then expect to have a good burger. It's got to have a little bit of tension in it. So what we're doing here is we're kind of mixing in the fat with the meat, not to a smear at all, but just enough that we get some density. I'll tell you what guys, if you overwork this, it will turn into a super dense meatball. We don't want that. So just work it for a couple seconds, smashing it around in your hands, folding it over, and we're good to go. Smoke alarm already. We haven't even put the fucking beef That's in the pan. Right. There's smoke in the kitchen. The this is where the broom is comes in. The alarm is loud. Smoke alarm silenced in the kitchen. We're back. Back in business. So now that we've worked our beef just enough, not overworked, we're not making a super dense meatball, I'm going to take one parchment sheet on the bottom, one parchment sheet on the top. So in place of having a fancy spatula, y'all, you can do this with your hands, okay? I'm not. Don't have to buy some extra equipment just to make a smash burger. So, top and bottom, I'm gonna make it into a little disc, and from here, I'm just gonna lay into it. What I like to do is press from the center outward, and really get it super thin. Now y'all are gonna be thinking, this fucking meat cracker is super big and the bun is not super big. The magic of burgers, guys, they always shrink up. They always puff up when they hit the heat. So if you think you're gonna have super tons of crust hanging off of your meat or your, your burger bun, here we go. If you're worried about having tons of meat crust hanging off your burger bun, don't sweat it. Also, if you do, that's okay. That's the fun stuff. That's the stuff I'm talking about at the beginning of this shitty episode is that you want that crusty stuff. You want this burger to fry in its own fat and a little bit of oil. Also, you're probably asking me, if you've got 80-20 beef, why so much fat? Why are you gonna add oil to the pan? The iron skillet, by its nature, is very porous. Imagine, not a flat surface, but a surface that goes up and down like this at a microscopic level. What you're gonna do when you add oil to that pan, <clears throat> all those little crevices and nooks and porous crannies is gonna come to a flat surface when you add oil. That's what I want. So that oil is just gonna be a touch, enough to get us started, and then the beef fat, as it renders out, is gonna take us the rest of the way into making a beautiful, wonderful burger. So, cameraman,
hit the fucking camera on this burger real quick. Let him see how flat we've got this. Now, just for perspective, you guys look at this. It doesn't look right, right? This is really gonna tense up and we're gonna have a little bit of crust left over hanging outside the bun, which to me is a hallmark of a great smash burger. So our skillet's firing super hot. We're gonna add some oil. We're gonna get this burger in. Follow me, let's go. Get us started, a little bit of oil. This is just plain old, I think it's vegetable oil, it might be canola oil, I really don't care, but you wanna use a high smoke point oil. If I put olive oil or something fancy in here, it's just gonna burn up, it's gonna create more smoke. If you hippies don't like this kind of stuff, you can get grapeseed oil, that's also a good alternative. But look for anything that has a high smoke point. Most oils today in the store are gonna tell you, at least on the, uh, on the label, it's a high smoke point or something to that effect. Anyway, vegetable oil, good as anything else. Just a little bit in there. Okay, now with this big flat meat cracker that we've got, I'm gonna peel back one portion of that. And you see why I like parchment, it comes off super easy. All right guys, I haven't seasoned this at all. I'm gonna season it in the pan. So this is super flat. It is gonna seize up a little bit when, I, when it cooks. Drop it down, peel off. Now, from here, as we normally do, we gotta season. Salt. Being that this burger is so thin, I don't want to over salt it. You might be asking me, how much salt is too salty? The great thing about smash burgers is that you'll want more than one. So if you fuck up an over salt one, you can always go back, make another one, put less salt on it next time. Okay. Now that we have the burger in the pan, as you can probably see from the shot, we got a fucked up heart shape on our burger. It's starting to fall apart. I'm not even worried about that. Again, this is a smash burger. You know what's gonna hold it together? The glue, the cheese. So if you get little holes or your burger starts making weird shapes, don't even worry about that. The cheese is gonna fill it in, hold it all together. Because this burger is so thin, it is going to cook fast. I'm probably gonna leave it on this side for maybe, I don't know, two minutes, maybe two and a half. When I flip it, there's not gonna be much cooking left to do. So, it's gonna be a really fast cook on the other side. I'm gonna have my cheese ready to drop on top as soon as I flip it, and then finish it off when we put it on the bun. Let's go. While the burger's frying up behind us, rather quickly, we're gonna prep our bun. Cause that burger is going straight from pan into the bun. So I'm starting with my Duke's mayonnaise on the bottom. Y'all, this is not negotiable. Get Duke's mayonnaise. Quit fucking around with shitty ingredients when it doesn't cost much more than a couple extra cents to get good ingredients. Dukes, if you can't find Dukes, you can probably find it on Amazon. All right, here we go. We've also got our chice, uh, good God. We've also got our diced onions. A little bit of diced onions on there goes a long way. You don't have to like double down on that at all. Unless you're an onion freak, put as much on as you want. Pickles, standard burger pickles, nothing fancy. Maybe two, three, four on there. It's a brand new jar, they pack them in tight. One more. And a uh, snacking pickle. All right, let's go check on this burger. As you can see, the burger's frying up real nice. I've got my mayonnaise knife, not worried about that. That's the smoke alarm. That's what we need the broom for. There's smoke. All right, we're fucked. Alright, bring it over. Bring it over. So, when you start seeing gray instead of red, it's good to flip. Look at that crust. Holy shit, we're burning the fucking house down. Cheese, straight on. Yes, this is exactly what we're looking for, guys. The smoke alarm going off means you did it right. Oh, I thought we were in the clear. We're not in the clear. Shit's falling apart around here. Fucking cameraman tripping over the drone. We're fucking losing it, but we're gonna have a good burger. Hang tight, hang tight. Let's get this burger out of the iron skillet, then we can handle the uh, smoke alarm. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. Use my knife. Plop this crispy boy down. Emergency. Mm -hmm. smoke. Emergency, here we go. Emergency. There's smoke in the 
alarm can't be silenced. This alarm can't be silenced. This alarm can't be silenced. Smoke levels are too high. What am I supposed to do about it? Emergency. There's smoke in the kitchen. Seen this trick once before. Sorry, I didn't put this on the ingredient list. But you might want to get a fucking leaf blower. All right. <sighs> okay. Burger is out of the skillet. The smoke alarm is fucking hushed. All right. That was a task in itself. We've got a cold beer. We've got a beautiful. Beautiful, crispy, smashy boy with a little bit of American cheese on it. Here's the deal, I wanted to touch on this very important thing. When I talk about Duke's mayonnaise, y'all, I'm not even kidding. This stuff is just pure fat, right? So the reason that we put the mayonnaise on the bottom bun is because we've got a greasy burger. That's why we toasted the bun, number one, kind of give it a little bit of concrete on top, and we put some mayonnaise slick on top of that. That fat layer of mayonnaise between bun and burger is gonna keep that bun from getting all smushy and shitty and gross. So, if you're thinking about putting your mayonnaise on the top, good for you, I hope you're doubling down, but really, I want you to put that mayonnaise on the bottom to hold the integrity of that bun. Also, I wanna talk about the toppings. If I put onions and pickles on top of this thing, they're gonna slide all over the place. So that's why we put the mayonnaise, onions, pickles on the bottom, and that way everything is held in place with the weight of that burger on top of it. Now from here, the only other thing I put on, a smashy boy, is a little bit of old school French's yellow mustard. If you're putting ketchup on your burger, you're fucking up. This one does not need ketchup. It's too acidic. It loses the taste of this crispy beauty that we've just developed. So a little bit of mustard just for the tanginess, a little bit of that acidic tartness goes well with this fatty burger right on top of the American cheese. Drop the butt on there, then watch this plating excellence. Michelin. Fuck with me. Here we go. Get that plate. You get this plate? Get this plate out close. Hold on, hold on. Let's get these chips around. All right. Check this shit, y'all. Check this shit. Look at it. We got these nice crispy edges that I've been talking about the whole time. That's the fun stuff. You might just want to pick at it before you even take a bite of the burger. You got mayonnaise, onions, pickles, a crispy smash boy, American cheese, and then we got the mustard on top. Also on the side, as you can tell, some crunchy kettle chips. Get with the times, y'all. Kettle chips. I'm tired of Lay's. I'm tired of floppy, greasy chips. Want something crunchy to go with the crunchy burger. Kettle chips only. Yo, this show actually made me happy. All right, I'm not teaching y'all how to make grilled cheese, right? This one, we did a smashy boy. This is the most advanced shit we've done so far. If y'all like this, let me know. We'll come up with some other stuff that you guys can do at home in the iron skillet. Again, the whole theme here, minimal equipment, minimal ingredients, great simple food. I've got a sweet potato bun, I've got some 80-20 beef, some cheese, mayonnaise, mustard, onions, pickles. Anything else is not fucking negotiable. This is a smash boy. I want you guys to enjoy everything on this without overloading it with bacon, mushrooms, Swiss cheese, all that other shit. That's for another burger. Time and place, this one, is gonna blow your fucking socks off. You and your friends, you're gonna be stoked, you'll be sitting around smoking weed one day talking about like, I want a smashy boy. It doesn't require much. This is what we're doing here, guys, this is what we're doing. So I want you guys to do it. I did it, simple. We set off smoke alarms, we put off the smoke alarms. Now I want you guys to go set off some smoke alarms. I did it, you do it, go do it, you did it. Let's make it happen. Thanks for tuning in. Fucking tune in to the next one. We'll see what we get into next. Cheers. This is last meal shit, dude. This is death row shit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right before the fucking meteor strikes? Fucking zombie apocalypse. You know what's coming? Get you a smash burger.
Like on signs when he's like, what do you guys want to eat yeah. before the aliens get here? The right answer is smash burgers. Remember they didn't even eat the food? They just like cried and got mad? What am I like your pussies? I've been eating smash burgers. <laughs>